The year was 2023, and Starbreeze Studios was ramping up marketing for their upcoming game, Payday 3. A significant size of the gaming community had a general distrust of larger game journalism outlets, but Starbreeze still needed to find a way to reach as many people as possible. Who do the players trust with game reviews? They asked one another. With so many players thinking the IGNs and game informers of the world are too biased because of sponsorship deals these days, who do they listen to now? What exactly does Modern Warfare 22 do right? Why has this game struck a chord with me? Does it also, we I first heard about OWI branching this, out to the Starship Here we are, yeah. I, was Look, despite our running joke, of the, the individual content creator brought with it the assumption of personal opinion and integrity, unaffected by the agendas of corporations or studios. This was the perfect vehicle for Starbreeze's marketing strategy. After all, ad revenue on YouTube was subject to so much change and volatility that was out of the creator's hands, Many content creators preferred having more control over their income, turning to methods such as sponsorships or subscription models like Patreon or YouTube membership to see more consistent income. Seriously, ad revenue is like a drunk uncle. You never know when it's going to screw. This was far from the first time content creators had been used for sponsorships, of course. So I got the opportunity to check out the Gamescom demo of this game and to go on a little orc hunt. <laughs> As part of its marketing strategy, Starbreeze offered these content creators a trip to New York City, attendance to a Payday 3 launch event, free merchandise, and the opportunity to play the game. In return, the creators would promote the game on their channels for their cumulative millions of followers to see. As to whether or not Starbreeze offered money directly to these YouTubers, I don't know, but it was common enough practice for sponsors to do that, so it wouldn't be unreasonable to assume that they did. Either way, the guests were wined, dined, and treated like royalty, all under Payday 3's marketing budget. But worry not, it's not like this influenced anyone's favor of the game or anything. I hate when people give me free stuff. Piss off, Santa. You commie. What kind of YouTube creators were invited to this event? One of these was The Act Man. Several of his channel's most popular videos, garnering millions of views, are centered around his opinions on whether he believes games are good, bad, mediocre, or masterpieces. He's also given videos with commentary on the greed and laziness of modern gaming on several occasions, such as the decline of gaming, the rise and fall of loot boxes, and the problem with live service games. Viewers that have followed him during his time on YouTube would have been able to rely on his videos to give harsh but fair criticism where it was deserved, especially when games released in subpar states. And most importantly, a complete misunderstanding of the word finished. If your internet connection isn't perfect, you will be dropped from matches instantly. Oh, oh, now, now you want to take your time and get it right. Now, okay, after you sold the game, after it lost 90% of its player base on Steam, okay, now, now you want to make sure the features are up and running. Gotcha. The Act Man didn't hesitate to call those games out for their broken launches. Another creator is Angry Joe Show, a channel whose backbone was literally angry reviews where part of their shtick is that they give in-depth criticism to greedy studio decisions and broken products. It's commonplace on their channel to see videos include entire skits that parody the problems with new games, and many segments of their reviews are literally screamed into the camera. First off, you want your game to work! We had so many crashes. Like, this is unacceptable for a release. And for this game to be get at eights and at no. The way they played the thing or they're being paid. I'm sorry. This is really f We started the <laughs> game by erroring, right? And guess what? We have not it's stopped erroring since. A third channel is Big Fry TV, a channel I was admittedly unfamiliar with prior to making this video, but posts several impression, review, and discussion videos about the state of modern games as well. This channel was started because I was tired of getting bad games from developers, whether that's indie, double A, or higher. I've always been focused on the product and how they're selling it. As the arrangement presumably required, promotional videos would need to be posted after the launch event. If Big Fry TV's second Payday 3 video is any indication, these videos appeared to require Starbreeze's approval for their titles, descriptions, and pinned comments, and be two videos total. 
This doesn't mean they necessarily wrote these things for the creators, just that the studio approved them for use. These videos were different from other types of sponsored videos though. They weren't promoting self-made products like apps that tried to convince you pictures of animals were a sound financial investment. <laughs> or slightly altering and repackaging cookies that were upcharged to a price only us poor idiot peasants would scoff at. I know, I know math is hard when you're an idiot, but... Uh, like, if you're a broke boy, just say so. They also weren't promoting products that were obviously not in the creator's expertise, like when a political commentary channel takes a break from farming outrage to promote a new brand of aglet for your shoelaces. Thank you, Phineas and Ferb, for that education, by the way. Nobody seeks out shoelace commentary from political channels. When these types of sponsorships pop up, it's generally easy to understand. We're watching commercials here. Nothing more. Payday 3 sponsored videos were a much different, much more effective type of promotion. They placed product promotion directly into the spot where people would be looking for that type of content. But sir, asked one Starbreeze executive, isn't this exactly the type of alleged practice that turned people away from bigger outlets in the first place? Look, son, do you want to be able to afford Pokimane's cookies or not? You say so. All three of these creators, and several more, geared up to promote Payday 3 a little bit differently. Angry Joe posted a gameplay and first impressions video before the game launched. This is important. Look at what Joe brought us. Oh yeah. From New York. But why does it matter if they posted their videos before or after launch? It's not like people buy video games solely based on one review. Well, if the opinions of gaming channels didn't sway sales in any way, I think we could all agree Starbreeze wouldn't have even bothered with this promotional event in the first place. The increase in sales would certainly be worth offering a discount. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. And yes, I understand the period between September 18th and September 21st was referred to as the early access period. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but paying a non-indie studio to play their game during that time frame nowadays just means you're paying an impatience tax. Now, that's mighty thoughty of you, Witter Woman. Check out this video if you want more commentary on that. So going forward in this video, I'm going to refer to September 18th as its launch. As for why it matters which videos are posted before or after launch, well... Don't Pre-Order Reboots covers this more extensively, but what we need to know here today is that Payday 3 didn't function at launch. At all. The term unplayable is used quite a bit when describing buggy games, but for this game, it was quite literal. The conversation around Payday 3 quickly devolved from the merits of the game itself and into the state of AAA gaming as a whole and its apathy toward finishing its products. Some still defended Payday 3's backlash with, It's not a big deal, it will get fixed eventually. Assume the position. Thank you sir, may I have another? And in unrelated news, domesticated sheep will expire from life if left alone for too long without their masters there to trim their wool down. The more you know. While the Payday 3 player base was still erupting in anger and Starbreeze was hard at work attempting to finish their game after they'd already charged people money for it, a third player entered the scene. The content creators still had sponsorship deals to uphold and promotional videos to upload. One of these was Big Fry TV, who posted his impressions video while Payday 3 was still unplayable. It looks like I got away with the Payday on this one. Get it? Because because the video is sponsored. Another is the Act Man's, whose video sent a bit stronger of a message. His Payday 3 is a certified banger video was an overall positive review of his time with the game, as you could probably guess by its title and thumbnail. I was invited by the Payday 3 developer Starbreeze to go out to New York and take part in one of the coolest pre-release gaming events I've ever been to. I gotta tell you, I, I'm infatuated. I think I'm falling for Krusty the Clown. Now I hear you, dear viewer. But these were impression videos, not reviews. While personally I think that's debatable with the Act Man's video, considering how in-depth he went with his commentary, but as for the semantics of impressions versus reviews, the intent of these videos for the studios is to persuade people to buy the game. And for the creators, it's for as many people as possible to see their video. Now combine the intent of the studio and the intent of the creator and you get the intent of these videos are for as many people in this creator's audience as possible to buy Payday 3. So unless in one of these promoted videos the creator says, 
Hey, this game's cheeks. Wait till it's better to buy it. We don't have to pretend that the link to download the game being in the video description is just there for and giggles. So how did these audiences respond to these positive videos while the game was still broken? Angry Joe's comment stayed mostly devoid of any backlash, likely in large part because the video they posted was days before launch and was primarily a gameplay video. But as for the Actman and Big Fry TV whose videos were posted when the game was out but still unplayable, why aren't you calling this game out for being unplayable? You normally hold devs accountable and did nothing this time. Remember when Big Fry would have unbiased takes and call out devs for releasing trash? Get that bag, I guess. Note to self, Actman will throw his audience under the bus for some money. Never thought I'd see the day Actman would sell out like this, but here we are. Actman has zero credibility with me now. There's a lot more than I can cover in this video, but the videos and comments are still up. Feel free to go check out some. To be fair, there's a negative two chance that any of these creators wanted this to happen or knew it was going to happen. It's not like Angry Joe and the boys took sledgehammers to Starbreeze's server room and hit everything with a blinking light. But people weren't accusing these channels of knowing this was going to happen. They were accusing these channels of the negligence required to post a video like this when the game's not even playable. To illustrate this, if I were to watch one of these videos on the day of publishing, and say to myself, hey, that game sounds pretty good, I'll go ahead and download it, then purchased it and tried to play it, I wouldn't have been able to. Yes, some platforms and methods of purchase allow for refunds, but what people were angry about is that it shouldn't have even gotten to this point at all. Let's look at the Actman's video. If you make it past the clearly promotional and positive title and thumbnail, and nine minutes into the video, he gives this quick aside. But the build I played was newer, so I imagine many of the technical issues I experienced in that latest beta won't be there at launch. This video will go live right around launch, so <laughs> let me know in the comments if I was right or not. If you were making a checklist of all the things that the Actman probably required in a sponsorship video, all the boxes would probably be checked, but the problem here was much bigger. The Actman's channel regularly provides reviews and criticism of new games and gaming studios that miss the mark. So where was the Why is Payday 3 so bad video? Or the Payday 3 is a broken disaster and should have been delayed video? How about the problem with modern game launches featuring Payday 3? Any of these videos would have been true to the Actman's brand, but instead Payday 3 was being promoted despite it containing some of the very same shortcomings the Actman had built his channel off of criticizing over the years. How did the Actman respond to the backlash? Well, he responded to some comments, at first pretty defensive that his takes were his own, they were not bought and paid for. He then proceeded to call one of his viewers intellectually dishonest for viewing his video in a similar vein as his usual review videos. The Actman also said that his viewers were being hella weird about him having a sponsorship. If we want to be generous, we could just chalk this up to an initial emotional knee-jerk reaction from being accused. Presumably, the Actman needed some time to settle down and collect his thoughts so that he could compose what some might call a real response. His real response can be found by going past this sponsored review, past another sponsored review, into his community tab, scrolling down past a sponsored ad for watches, and there we can find a full response to the Payday 3 backlash. It seems pretty collected and well-worded, pause this if you'd like to read it. While it is nice that he took the time to respond at all, he primarily seemed to only want to respond to the accusations that his words weren't his own. There wasn't really a response here for the people that were asking, where is the Payday 3 criticism? If the promotion for a broken game can easily be found on the main page of his channel, and therefore in YouTube's algorithm for even further exposure, why must an apology for it be searched for under his community tab in a written post? Why isn't it just as easy to find his apology as it is his promotional video, and why isn't it a video at all? Did the sponsorship agreement with Starbreeze forbid him from making that type of video? Let's shift over to another content creator who did exactly that. As mentioned earlier, Big Fry TV's channel was subject to the same kind of backlash the Actman faced. And also similar to the Actman, Big Fry TV was pretty defensive in his comments at first too. Even more so in my opinion. The next day after his sponsored video, he posted a follow-up video addressing the incident with very humble and very passionate points about his gratitude and faithfulness to his audience. So on the topic of putting the Payday 3 video out completely tone deaf, I'm owning that. That is on me. It's a symptom of me just being knee deep in work and not actually looking at the situation before a video went out. I had some people say that it's a bad look that it went out and I, I completely agree. I'm not going to give you guys excuses. I'm just going to own it. 
That's on me. I'll take that one on the chin. The title was even my response, so it was very clear what it was and very easy to find. It was just as accessible as his promotional video. It was a video. If posting a follow-up video that apologizes for a sponsor's failure to perform, if that terminates the agreement between the creator and the sponsor, maybe a conversation needs to be had about where a creator should be drawing the line between looking out for their fans and looking out for their wallets. For Big Fry TV though, that didn't seem to be an issue, which can be assumed because he still posted his second sponsored Payday 3 video a couple of months later, which was mainly just gameplay. If all sponsored creators got the same instruction to make two Payday 3 videos, maybe we'll see a follow-up from Ackman at some point, but as of recording, there isn't one to be found on his YouTube channel. It may seem like I'm criticizing Ackman the hardest here, but I honestly do hope that the viewers that lost trust in him are able to trust him again, and that he's able to use this as a learning opportunity for his sponsorships going forward. If I can offer a stranger's two cents, the string of sponsored reviews so close to the Payday 3 fiasco is not the best look when people are still accusing you of being a sellout. Wait, 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 wait! Just a thought, run your channel however you please. As for Angry Joe, the channel posted their second Payday 3 promotional video after the game became playable. And here was their response about the launch fiasco. Alright guys, so I'm gonna do Touch the Sky. Welcome back, it's Payday 3. Payday 3 had some launch problems. Apparently they got a server update now. So we're gonna jump into it, see if it's good to go now. Uh, let's try this, this cowboy here. They got- Wait, that's it? No skit about Payday 3 failing at launch? No screaming into the camera about developer ineptitude or the failures of AAA gaming? They did it for other games, but not Payday 3. Why might that be, I wonder? Thing or they're being paid. Thing or they're being paid. Or they're being paid. Maybe Actman or Angry Joe did post responses to it in other places like Discord or X or Twitter, but frankly, no one should be having to look in any other platforms or any other places except for their main YouTube channel, if that's where the original sponsorship was posted in the first place. I also think that it's telling that the smaller of these three channels was the one who put the most effort and intention into their response about their sponsor's symptoms of modern gaming. Sponsorships are not a bad thing on their own. It's when sponsorships are handled poorly that they can compromise the relationship between the creator and their audience. This video isn't meant to be a hit piece on other creators, so, you know, don't go harass them on behalf of this video or anything like that. The main point is just to spread awareness and remind everyone that no matter where the marketing for your next game is coming from, even if it's from your favorite content creators, there's always a possibility that it does not have your best interests at heart. I'm also not here to try to micromanage anyone else's channels either. Obviously, gaming content creators get to choose when they want to pursue sponsorships and when they don't. I can't make that decision for them, and I'm not here to tell them what to do. However, if we as gamers have no issue criticizing studios when it feels like they're compromising their fans in their pursuit of profit, let's stop pretending we aren't allowed to provide that very same sort of feedback to our favorite content creators when we feel that way about them. There are times when I have trouble believing it myself. Sponsorships aren't going anywhere, and neither are sponsored game reviews, but who carries the burden to make sure people aren't being misled? The audience or the creator? As for our role as the audience, everyone here is an individual human being with their own free will. Well, I assume. Creators don't force viewers to buy anything. After all, people make their own decisions. But the burden should never solely be on the audience to have to figure out when a creator is being genuine or not. Don't forget, IGN reviews used to be respected once upon a time. Now, it's headline-worthy news when they give a good take. No single content creator, no matter how large, is immune from the audience deciding they can't be trusted anymore. You greedy dirtbag! Payday 3's sponsorship and launch, if nothing else, was a reality check. If a creator wants to keep their audience's trust, they've got to be proactive about sponsors they take on, not reactive to when it goes poorly. Research beforehand, strong emphasis on disclaimers, and unfiltered honesty are going to be keys here. Speaking to myself too, I'm not holier than thou. If the day ever comes where I get a sponsorship opportunity, I need to follow these things if I want to keep my audience. As for emphasis on disclaimers, what would stop creators from giving a big, heavy emphasis right at the beginning when viewer retention is the highest of their video, this is just the build I played, this may not be what it's like at launch, these are just my impressions of a pre-launch build. Also, I'm being paid to show you this right now. If a sponsor doesn't allow a creator who cares about their audience to do this, why would the creator take the deal at all? Then again though, that doesn't solve the ethical dilemma of a paid review being on a review channel. 
Maybe it's not full-blown heresy, maybe it's just a little bit of bias we have to look out for. I mean, honestly, think about it. If a content creator was flown out to New York City, given free drinks, free merchandise, private access to a game before launch, how likely is it that they wouldn't have even an ounce of bias in their sponsored review? Even if it's a game review channel, we've got to look at paid reviews like late night infomercials. Imagine owning the world's greatest love songs. That's neat, maybe entertaining, but at the end of the day, the primary motive is to sell you something. If we can keep that mentality, no matter who's giving the review, we will never be blindsided by when a sponsor fails to live up to its promises. But this is only going to get better if creators are given respectful feedback and constructive criticism. The channels that care about you, the viewer, are going to take it in stride and apply it. So long as it's within reason, of course. Stop asking me to spit roast Winnie. Well, until the apocalypse starts and the supply lines are down anyway. Then all bets are off. Speaking of respectful feedback and constructive criticism, do you feel like my assessment was fair? Was I too harsh? Too easy? What do you think is the right way to do a sponsored game review, if at all? Let me know down in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching. Kingered out.